While well, first half this afternoon, increases in transfer fares and surging food prices pushed the rate of inflation for the month of May 2022 to 27.6%. This is against 23.6% recorded in April. According to government statistician Professor Kobnenim, the rate of inflation for food, transportation, as well as electricity, water, household, gas, were higher than the national average rate of inflation. There is more in this report. All the goods and services in the basket which measures the rate of inflation recorded an increase in prices year on year. According to figures from the Ghana Statistical Service, the month-on-month -month rate of inflation stood at 4.1%, but the financial and insurance subsector recorded no change in price for the month of May. Here is government statistician Professor Samuel Kobna Enim. Year-on-year -year inflation for the month of 2022 stood at 27.6. This indicates a 4.0 percentage point variation between the rate that was recorded in April 2022 relative to May 2022. As it would be recalled, in April 2022, year-on-year -year inflation stood at 23.6, and for May 2022, year-on-year -year inflation was 27.6. This literally means that over this one-year period, that is between May 2021 and May 2022, prices, prices of goods and services have gone up by 27.6%. On a month-on-month -month basis, that is between April 2022 and May 2022, prices of goods and services went up by 4.1%. Um, Disaggregating this inflation rate across food and non-food inflation, and also across locally produced items and imported items, food inflation for the month of May 2022 stood at 30.1%, and non-food inflation for the month of May 2022 stood at 25.7%. The Upper East region registered the lowest rate of inflation of 18.7% in May, whilst the Eastern region recorded the highest rate of inflation of 31.2%. From a regional perspective, Eastern region recorded the highest overall rate inflation of 31.2%, and Upper West recorded, and Upper East recorded the least inf inflation of 19.5%. On a month-on-month -month basis, rate of inflation for the month of May 2022 stood at 4.1%, decreasing by 1.0 percentage point relative to the rate recorded for April 2022. On a month-on-month -month basis, food inflation and non-food inflation respectively stood at 4.0 and 4.1%. We further do disaggregation to guide our discourse on rates of inflation. We identified 89 items that recorded inflation rates higher than the national average of 27.6%. Out of these 89 items, 47 of them were food inflation, specifically with local food 32%, 32 of them, and imported food 15%. Meanwhile, the Ghana Statistical Service from next month will start releasing the rate of inflation for all the 16 regions in the country. So the government statistician uh, addressing the press uh, this morning, economist Dr. Du Osusako, they're joining me on Zoom to make sense of the latest numbers. Uh, good afternoon to you, sir. So we expected inflation rate to go up. What is alarming, though, is the difference between April and May, a 4% increase. That is so alarming. Yes, it is alarming, but you realize that uh, it is lower than between March and April, because between March and April, the difference was 4.2%, uh, uh, that is year on year. And then month on month, it was 5%. But between April and May, it has reduced from 5% to 4.1% uh, month on month. And then year on year, it has reduced from 4.2 uh, to 4.0. So the rate uh, of inflation rate, you know, between the month of April and May, it has slowed down. However, uh, the current inflation rate is still high. And then he also said that uh, imported inflation is driving uh, inflation in the country. We have food inflation also uh, being higher than uh, non-food inflation. So basically, the, the analysis always comes down to food inflation. Um, and that is why it is important to concentrate on food uh, if we are to solve this issue. Uh, the Bank of Ghana has been doing its bit uh, by increasing the policy rate. But in fairness to the Bank of Ghana, 
they can only fight the demand side of inflation. As for the supply side of inflation, it goes beyond Bank of Ghana. It has to do with both the fiscal policies and the real economic growth of the country. And if we have to resolve inflation in the country, we need to you know, attach more importance to the real sector where we grow food and then where we also manufacture local goods. But you realize that it is not only about the imported, even with the local production, inflation is high. Take a look at the PPI, the producer price index. It is very high. What is it telling you? It is telling you that even if you ignore imported inflation and concentrate on local production, still prices of goods are still rising. So there's a whole lot. This requires holistic approach. And this is a worry situation because, uh, as we know, inflation erodes the value of your money. In other words, um, if you bought something for 100 cities last year, you add 27.6 uh, cities more to buy the same item. If you reverse it and you look at inflation as a silent thief, as my professor would put it, now the thief is stealing 27.6% of our money. So every 100 cities that you have in your pocket, 27.6 mm. is, is gone because the thief called silent, uh, the, the silent thief called inflation is stealing the value of our money. Now, the thief is stealing 27.6 cities of every 100 cities in our pocket. This is an alarming situation. Ghana has the highest inflation in West Africa. We have to deal with it. Wow. And I don't want to get into what the government should be doing because you have discussed this so many times. The central bank in a recent interview was confident that we would see the rate drop to single digit by next year. How would that happen, uh, seeing that we are dealing with the same factors that are causing the spike? You note that um, between, uh, was it March and April, if you compare the rate of increase to this one, uh, May, uh, between April and May, it, there's a slight decline. Is that going to be the trend we are going to see towards the end of the year? Well, I hope so, but you know, a lot depends on what happens uh, from the external sources. Remember that before COVID and before the war, Ghana was doing relatively well. Ghana was doing single digit inflation. So we have still not recovered from the COVID-19 effect. And then we have also not recovered from the war. So a lot depends on when the Russian Ukraine war is going to end. If, even if the war ends today, it will take Ukraine more than five years to recover everything and to reposition their economy. So if you are fully dependent on Russia and Ukraine, and the war even ends today, it's going to take us about five years to get back to normal level. So if you depend on somebody and the person is not able to help you, what do you do? You don't fold your arms and sit down. You have to do your, uh, something for yourself internally. So the simple answer to your question is that it depends on the external factors which have been the contributory factors driving inflation. But in addition to that, we have our own local problems. Mm. Even if you ignore the imported inflation, we have our own local problems. So to the extent that we can control inflation, we have to deal with the local you know, uh, problems. Problems with respect to uh, price of inputs, fertilizer inputs, uh, inputs like fertilizer, the seedlings that we use for production, irrigation, storage, transportation, these are all part of the local um, problems that we face in the country. So we have to, first of all, hope that the war ends and then Russia or Ukraine recovers. And also we have to deal with the internal problems that we have in our economy with respect to food production and also other you know, uh, sources of inflation. Because a typical example mm. is the fuel prices. How are we going to resolve the fuel prices? So again, uh, the fuel price, the crude oil price has shot up. The budget for this year was $62 per barrel. Today we are doing over $100 per barrel because of the war. So uh, to the extent that the war will continue, I'm not sure we'll be able to uh, deal with the inflation. But we have to start putting things in place now. We don't so, have to wait for anybody. So the, the single-digit inflation is not cast in stone for next year. And until then, uh, the thief inflation will continue to steal my 27.6% uh, of 100 Ghana cities. The, the ordinary person is bearing the brunt of inflation. Yes, yes. Uh, the ordinary person is bearing the brunt of inflation. 
uh, imagine if you bought something from the market last year, and, and on the average, you have to add 27 cities more uh, to, to buy the same item that you bought last year. But we must also disaggregate inflation. Remember that inflation is just the average. And you just mentioned that the regional distribution has upper east recording the lowest and uh, eastern region recording the highest. So while some regions are feeling a bit okay, other regions are feeling uh, the, the heavy hit. So in the same way, on the micro level and, or on the individual level, depending on the weight of the item that you buy, for somebody it could be four. So the inflation to individual A could be by 50%, depending on the item that you buy. Inflation for individual B could be 100%, depending on the items that you buy. And I'll give you a typical example. Last month, grapes was recorded 101% inflation grapes, followed by diesel. So if you are somebody who likes grapes a lot and you buy grapes a lot, you realize that your inflation in your pocket is 100%. Hmm. But another person who's, who also pays a crash or a kindergarten fees, which recorded a negative inflation, that person will be feeling okay. So inflation pressure in our pockets will differ from one person to the other, depending on the weight of the items that you buy. In other words, depending on the items that you consume most, me, as I speak with you, the item that takes a greater part of my expenditure is full because I, I go out and go to meet, meet this a lot. To somebody, it could be tomatoes. To another person, it could All be right. oranges. To another person, it could be grapes. To another person, it could be yam. To another person, it could be gas. So inflation, like I said, will differ from, at the individual level, will differ from one person to the other. While somebody may be recording even a negative inflation in his pocket, another person may be recording 100% inflation in his pocket. I guess we just have to readjust. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Eduo Sasakodia, who is an economist, uh, speaking to us on the latest inflation numbers. You are uh, watching the marketplace. Still to come, how do we fix the current economic challenges I'll have in studio member of parliament for Inshires in the Ashanti region, also a member of the Finance Committee of Parliament, Dr. Stephen Amwa. Stay tuned. And welcome back to the marketplace. <laughs> a mixed bag of financial and economic theories have made Ghana's business environment complex over the years. The country has never achieved single-digit <laughs> interest rates regime, whilst the local currency has always come under severe pressure whenever there are internal or external shocks. Now, this has created a challenging business environment which does not augur well for effective planning and decision-making. But the good thing is that various experts have been working to find lasting solutions to this uh, one of them is a member of parliament for in Shayasun, the Ashanti region, uh, Dr. Stephen Amma, also a member of parliament's finance committee, who is leading a team to outdoor uh, financial and economic model that will help address Ghana's uh, economic challenges. His outfit will be hosting a seminar on the theme, identifying and redefining the economic fundamentals of developing countries, the anomalies and challenges and case in the case of Ghana. He joins me in studio. Good afternoon to you, sir. Uh, thanks for joining us on the marketplace. And so before we talk uh, more about uh, this uh, program that is coming up, I just wanted to pick your thoughts on inflation because the uh, Ghana Statistical Service released the figures for May, 27.6%. It should be concerning. I mean, what are your thoughts on what's happening and how we should deal with it? Yeah, um, I think my regards to our viewers this very afternoon, it is extremely challenging. It's mm -hmm. not anything that we can heap scorn on as, as a country. Uh, but of course, uh, because of sometimes the way people handle some of these extracts, we tend to let them also understand the reality. I think U.S. today is 41 year or high. Mm -hmm. U.S. it's about 32 year or high. So this is a global issue. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't see it as a challenge to work on it. It is something we need to, and something ironically, I was asking somebody, when inflation rates are in single digit, we say that, oh, ordinary man is not important. Yo, you are talking about figures. Go, is it, is it a real case on the market? Now that is very high, then that one, the ordinary man understands. The fact is, we are in a very bad times. Let's be very honest, all over the world. Now, even some parts of America, they don't even get baby food 
on the shelves. So this situation, one, is global. But the fact that it's global doesn't mean that we should support something like your statement. It's extremely important that as a country, we quickly come around the table, bring all stakeholders on board, and see how best can we mitigate the impact of this hardship. Because it's really getting out of hand. So the, the argument is that governments over time have missed uh, the opportunity to fix some of the challenges. For instance, with the food supply, because we rely on countries such as Russia and Ukraine for fertilizer. Now we are in a fix because there, there's a war ongoing there and we can't supply fertilizer to farmers right here in Ghana. Yeah, yeah yesterday I was listening to BBC. Mm -hmm. Parts of America, they, can, they have problem with fertilizer. So I get your point, but your question is so important. And that is why our seminar is important. Somebody like you should come. Do you know what it's, what it's addressing? It's addressing these fundamentals. Okay. Why should Ghana import even all these? When we have almost everything that we need only to create the needed value chain and produce everything we need, especially from agri sector, we have almost everything, natural resources, raw materials. They don't require complex value chains in producing them. So one of such anomalies is what we have identified. It's sometimes economic policies, anomalies, that I'm talking about. Our case, why this is happening is that governments, I'm not saying government, governments as mm -hmm. often borrow on our domestic market at a higher interest rate. It's causing almost all this. When you come there, you understand. I mean, why should treasury bills give returns more than risky assets? Treasury bills are risk-free by the government. And if government is borrowing at a higher rate, almost all the banks will prefer investing in government securities. So private sector that has the capacity to produce these things you're talking about, they don't have adequate funds. The Russian funds that they will have, interest rate will always be double digit. And if you test all the formulas, 1965 by Sharp, 76 by Ross, 93 by Hanan and Lian, they were two, 2015 by Deming, the models they have are not good enough or pointers for our market. Mm -hmm. And that is what I researched and remodeled. I improved upon this. I've come out with a new model that if the regulators are able to use or integrate that in their policy frameworks, it may help. But the fact of the matter is that under no circumstance that any government, whether government A or B, should borrow on our domestic market at a higher interest rate than the private sector. It's not done, but it is happening in Ghana. And it's not today, it's like 40 years staff. Just maybe short time, you get the reverse. But most of the times, or often, this is what happens. And that is why we want to start tackle the basis, the fundamentals, the behavior economics, things that if you don't fix them, it's like building a whole skyscraper on a wrong foundation. I'm interested in the work that the, the team, the team of experts have done um, and in terms of a financial and economic model. Uh, what have you discovered to be what that would be appropriate for us? Because over time, our economy has been based on uh, export of raw materials and not even uh, produce, uh, not, not even adding value to uh, some of the things that we produce in this country, which has been uh, something that's... Uh, that's By the cause of every problem, unemployment, uh, exchange rate, everything is the main cause. And we so don't have any justification. What's the economic model that we, we need right now? Oh, at the current what, what I did is an aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Because one of the major challenges confronting us as a country is one, availability of adequate funds for the private sector to expand organically so they can employ a lot of people, they can produce to meet aggregate demand and cut down importation and then reduce depreciation of our city. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? This is the main thing that we need to do. So we have done, or I did it. In fact, my work was examined by two professors, uh, Adibanji and Accra on KNUSD campus. And then the work was examined by one professor from Canada and one from uh, Pakistan together with the KNUSD professors. So I've come out with a new model as an improvement on the existing one for the banking sector. It will help them a lot. But the core issue we want to address, which is one of the fundamentals causing the issues we are raising, is the fact that the private sector, which is an engine of growth in Ghana here, governments, whether A or B, are challenging and competing with them for funds. Mm -hmm. And the government is rather giving higher returns. If I'm giving my money to government, it's giving me 20%. Will I give it to you? Exactly. Treasury bills in other developed jurisdictions fall within 1.52%. Now, treasury bills is about 22% or 21. 
So we have these fundamentals that I, I know I will be attacked. I don't care whoever will attack, whether I'm MPP and DC. But what I'm trying to say is that it is not party A or B's problem. Ghana's problem has been the fact that multiple, multiples of decades, there are fundamentals that we need to fix. We always just talk about them. It is time we fix them. Before we even move to the secondary issues of what the public, they say, other stakeholders, the media, there are common issues that technocrats, mm -hmm. experts, politicians, regulatory bodies, authorities, policy makers should say enough is enough. These are the right models. Let's try them, work with them. And as a country, we can manage our sovereignty right. within these defined models. We, we don't want to give all away uh, before the seven on the 13th yeah, yeah. of June, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we have one professor from Switzerland. He's coming to speak yeah, on I want to have an idea uh, which people are, are gracing the, uh, the seminar. Yeah, what actually the main there? speakers are Professor David Yana Gizawa Drott from Department of Economics, University of Zurich, Switzerland. And then Professor Atinike Adibanji, Head of Statistics and Natural Science Ken USC, but she is a Nigerian. Okay. And they have Dr. Assistant Professor, Department of Economics, Institute of Business Administration, Karachi, Pakistan. And then we have other chairman. Is it Professor Emerito Stephen Ade who will come as a All chairman? Right. Then we have a team of discussants, uh, bank uh, commercial bank boss, uh, AGI boss, Guita boss, somebody from NIB, and then other young ladies who are into entrepreneurs and holding vital, relevant positions. So we want not this time just to talk and leave. We want to push this advocacy and make sure that, okay, if it is high unemployment rate, something must be done till we, we solve it. You know, the, the, this the, is what we the, want the, to do. The, the issue I have with seminars is that it, it becomes a talk shop and then we see nothing uh, done. So how confident are you that you're going to be pulling this through to ensure that some of the things that suggestions you make are adopted by governments with an S? And that is why we set up a financial economics seminar body, well registered. Mm -hmm. And we're going to push this agenda. And that's why we are bringing stakeholders on board. We'll follow up. Even if the model is good or not good for Ghana, we want stakeholders to digest it, take it on board, run it, test it, and see. Even if they are, it's good or not, should we still experience double-digit interest rate economy? Whilst others are giving 6%, Ghana is always 40 How can you as entrepreneurs succeed? Right. How can we import free product? I mean, oranges, how? You only squeeze our preservative, it's free juice, and yet we have to import chemicals. These are fundamentals that we all have to solve. You know what we say? Enough is enough. When we, we need to solve these problems. In normal times, we refer to COVID-19, but the way the economy is going, we are certainly not in normal times, and we need uh, something to think around how we can fix uh, the current economic challenges. And so we'll be looking forward to that seminar. Dr. Uh, Stephen Amwa, uh, MP for Inshire, so also a member of the Finance Committee of Parliament. Where, where is it taking place? At? Um, in the International Conference Centre on the 13th Parliament. of June. Of course, it's free. it's free. We'll provide lunch for those who will come, something at least, <laughs> just to make sure that we, we restore the energy that you lost All right. coming to the con. But the point is, all of you should be part of this awareness creation um, exercise. All of you, let's push it. Great. Let's push it. Let's push it to the extent that a time may come that we will not import any free juice. These are not complex value chains. They are not difficult, so I don't get it. We need Plant to fruit, our, our produce them, that. eat some, export some. Why can't we? Data, data is, is a big issue. Dr. Stephen Amwa there, MP for Insha, is also a member of the Finance Committee of Parliament. That's the marketplace. In two minutes, I'll be on radio uh, to do the master class sitting in for Yabana for uh, hosting the CEO of Chop Shop. So don't miss it if you can on Joy 99.7 FM. That's the marketplace. Goodbye. <laughs>